Hey guys, welcome back to the Fool's Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Just wanted to give you my thoughts of Michigan's 76 to 58 victory over Florida State tonight. Oof, what a fun game! I have obviously there's some story themes that I want to try to talk about. So, give you my foolish thoughts here on the first half. It was a pretty tight game, honestly. Defensively, Michigan was outstanding in the first half. They had nine turnovers from Florida State. Some were earned, some were just given. And Michigan turned those nine turnovers into 14 points. And Michigan was up 32-21 at half. I would just want to say two, one thing about that. That was Florida State's lowest point output in the first half all year. Again, it seems Michigan is able to lock down defensively for at least a half per game at least. That's how they were playing. They were really clicking in early February when before the COVID shutdown happened for the program. It was nice to see them have that again this game. Just really good defense. And I have to say, too, that Michigan was not impacted by Florida State's length. In fact, they seemed to thrive on and attack the Florida State length. They kept going to the paint and getting points over and over and over. But I'll get to that in a minute. So after ha at half, it was 32-21 Michigan. The second half starts, and it was kind of a well, back-and-forth game to, for the first four or six minutes. Uh, Florida State started out kind of hot. They got a couple three-pointers. And actually, their Osborne was the only one who hit three-pointers. He finished with 12 points and four three-pointers. The team as a whole, I think, went 5 of 20 or 5 of 25 on three-pointers. Just not very good shooting for Florida State from three. And it's very hard to beat Michigan in a half-court situation where you have to just settle for two-pointers against Michigan because they play really good, strong defense. They have lots of height, Johns. And Dickinson and Wagner and Brown really attack the defensive side. They really keep their hands up straight so they don't get called for defensive fouls a lot. And Michigan just kept kind of clicking. But right there, when it, it, at one point it was 41-36. to 36. Florida State had hit a three-pointer, got the lead down to five. And I was sitting there talking to my brother thinking, this game just kind of in limbo. Who's going to take over this game? And from that point, when it was 41-36, Michigan outscored Florida State 35-22 to the rest of the game. I, if, if, just thinking, who's going to take over this game? And Michigan did. Michigan did. Again, Michigan got even more turnovers in the second half. They got 14 turnovers for the whole game, which ended up being 24 points. And those, Michigan also gave up turnovers. And those turned out to be 6 points for Florida State. 24 minus 6, 18 points. There's your winning margin for the basketball game right there. Also, I want to point out another thing. Fouls. Always kind of concerned how the refs are going to call the game. Michigan only got called for 10 fouls in the whole game. Florida State had 22. None of those were garbage time fouls where they were trying to, you know, extend the game. Those were all just in the game fouls. Another important stat. Michigan, for the whole game, shot just under 50%, but in the second half, they shot 69% from the floor. 69% in the second half. And talking about the points in the paint, Michigan had a 50 to 28, 50 to 28 point advantage. 22 more points in the paint. And in the second half, Michigan had 34 of those points. So they were just dominating the paint. You had Dickinson scoring. You had Davis scoring. John scoring. Wagner driving to the lane. Got to just give total props. Brandon Johns came out on Fire finished with 14 points. He in the first four minutes he drew four foul. Sorry, he drew two fouls playing offense. He drew an offensive foul on Gray, I think it was, and just he was all over the court. He got a couple dunks. He got six points, I think. Maybe it was even eight. I think it was six in the first four minutes. He was just really engaged. Then you have Dickinson with 14 points, I think it was, and eight rebounds. You had Brown off the bench with 12 points. Throw in Davis. And you had 18 points off the bench. Again, there's your winning margin right there before Jace Howard got a and one to make it you know, 21 points. But when the game was actually being played, played, 18 points off the bench. Just outstanding off the bench there by Brown. Again, I think it was 5 of 6 on shooting. Davis, I think, was 3 of 3. So just stupendous bench play again. And you just the ball being moved around so much. When the game was in flux, when the game was down to... 20, sorry, 41 to 36. Michigan had, I think, seven assists. They ended up having 19 for the whole game. So all of a sudden, Michigan got back to Michigan basketball, passing the ball, getting easy shots, 
wonderful ball movement, and boom, that really sets up Michigan. That's what Michigan's offense is, moving the ball. They have finished with 19 assists, only 10 turnovers, it looks like, at least in my box score. Just great job. They held Florida State's highest-scoring player, Walker, to only 10 points. I said Osborne. He had four three-pointers. He had 12, I believe it was. Just an outstanding defensive effort. Again, I wasn't sure what how this game would go. I always have like that fear of doom and gloom. <laughs> like, ah, the nervous energy. And, man, what a fun game. So much fun. I just love watching this team play. And, obviously, the game versus LSU, I think, was a big stepping stone for this team to win high-scoring game. Then the team today rounded out into form really good defense, which they didn't have. Now, I'm not saying they didn't play good defense against LSU because LSU had just some, you know, fadeaway jumper NBA shots going in for them. They did. But much better defense scoring-wise in this game and much better. It's the same consistent offense. And that's what you get. You get an 18-point win for Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines are moving on to the Elite Eight versus either Alabama or UCLA. We'll see how that goes. Doesn't matter who I think, who I want them to play because... Michigan's going to play, and they're going to play hard, and hopefully they'll come out with a win. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this game and what's ahead. I'll try to respond to those comments as I can. Also, thanks to the subscribers, as always. Appreciate that. And until I see you guys next time, go Blue!